Hey guys, it's Ben. I am here to walk you through my Interactive Immersive Championship Round 2 project. Um, and if you watch the stream, you might know uh, Round 2 was the integration round. So um, using software outside of Touch Designer, in my case was a Node.js server, which I'll get into. Um, but we also had the requirement of using a Twitch integration um, this came courtesy of Elbers, so you can find the source of this in this tutorial. Um, we basically used a modified version of this tox file. So um, you go in here, you see all the logic necessary to get messages out. Um, the difference was that we had um, some additional logic to get specific messages in. So text like um, black or red, triangle, circle, um, we were able to get messages that began with those. But um, for the simplicity's sake, I'm just going to show you um, this setup working with the, the basic version um, that we find here where any message is valid and comes through to touch. Um, so a demo of that should be able to, for example, send a message and we see it right there. So I'm piping that message in and um, we are isolating just the first one right here and formatting it in this um, two column format where um, this is actually the body of the request we're gonna send to the node server. Um, so it's plugged in right here to this web client dat. And this format indicates that we're going to have in our body a key of message with a value of the latest message. So again, we say latest. And what's happened here is we've updated um, the value here. And on that update, we are going to pulse the request parameter of the web client. And what that's gonna do is reach out to our node process and um, keep everything flowing on down. So I'll show you the server now. Um, it's relatively short. Um, we just have one route here um, beyond all the setup. And what that does is it listens for requests. Here's that um, message parameter that we're sending in here. And when we get that, we are using this library, which is pretty cool, called DeepAI. Um, this is just an example right now, but I'll show you. Um, these folks, deepai.org, have a really cool API where you can type pretty much anything. Yep. And it will return. <laughs> a very relevant image here, um, which is generated through machine learning. Um, so that's pretty cool. And um, what's nice is that they give us the ability to access it um, through a server. So they have Python examples or Ruby, um, whatever you're more comfortable with. For me, um, I'm going with JavaScript. So um, all that we have to do is um, basically transfer over this functionality um, where we are calling their API for an image, and then they're going to send us back a URL for um, the image that is generated, like the URL. What's the URL for this? Um, we're going to get back this URL, basically. So all of that is happening just on this line right here, and then what we're doing, um, which I'll explain more later, um, we have to download the image um, to save it locally. So I just have a helper function defined in a file over here, which um, just gives the file a name um, and saves it to my hard drive under this folder, which you can see here is our folder of images. Um, and that's pretty much it. And then what happens from there is once we have that um, successful image download, what we're going to do is use OSC 
the Node OSC package to very simply send that URL back to Touch Designer um, in this format of URL. Let's bring that up here so you can see. So in our OSC in, we are receiving in this format of slash URL and then the local path for the image. So um, from there, it's pretty straightforward. We are just formatting this um, so that we end up with a table containing all of these local paths in one column and then a zero indexed column of IDs that's gonna come in handy for um, our rendering process. Um, before we get there, you might be wondering um, why do we do this in a separate process? Why don't we just um, load the images directly into touch, especially because if we look at the movie file in, um, we actually already have the ability to um, specify a URL in here and have it load. And you saw that little stall that happened um, when I did that, and that's the reason why. Um, it's not a big deal in this demonstration, but I've seen cases where when you're waiting to load um, an image that's remote, it can be blocking um, the way that Python is threaded in touch. You know, we could have done, technically we could have done all these requests um, directly in our uh, web client or used a web server dat. Um, but I found that um, this can be really problematic when you're trying to load a bunch of images or big images. Um, you can lose a lot of frames because the Python thread will basically block the execution of frames and then you end up with a uh, hanging installation and that's no good. So doing it in an outside process, saving them to disk, um, it's kind of inconvenient, but it's um, the best experience overall um, that I've found. Um, but yeah, anyway, so we have our sources here and all we're doing, um, pretty simple, but I'll show you. So um, replicating this node um, into these pick comps and all that's in here. We have the texture, which um, contains the source, um, our local source. Um, we have a switch that is conditionally based on whether or not uh, the texture is fully loaded. We might show this um, transparent square so that that way, otherwise we're gonna have, if we, if we don't do that, then we're just gonna have a floating black square, whatever your default image for the movie file is. Um, and we don't want that because that's in the way of everything. So um, simplest solution was just like show a transparent square and um, that way it won't be in the way of anything and we can call it a day. So moving on down the chain, we have a rectangle um, and we're just loading the text onto there. Um, we're driving these with some noise. Our noise is the same length as our number of URLs. Um, and that is driving our position here. And then um, we are grabbing the textures. Um, this line here is a reference to um, inside of our loaded component, all of the text files, text files. Um, and sources ID here, that's how we're identifying them. You know what's up. You, you get it. Um, anyway, yeah, and then some very simple jigglies going on here using a time machine, um, text 3D. Um, I didn't have time to go crazy on this like um, some of the other competitors um, did with the really beautiful stuff. But you can see how you can, you know, obviously you can do anything you want with these images. Once you have them, you could um, render them in any way. You could also extend this out to use something other than um, this server, you know, you could have a much more complicated backend where you are pulling in user uploaded photos. Somebody could be sending in photos, taking photos with their camera, sending it in. Um, and this is, would be pretty um, trivial to adapt to a situation like that. Um, 
So yeah, let me try to give a quick demo, I guess. Let's maybe clear these. Hey, that was fun. All right. Um, let's see what happens here. Keep my server in plain, in plain sight. Okay, so that didn't go through, and that may be because we need to rejigger the mainframe. Okay, all right, something happened. And now let's try again. There we go. Okay, fire water earth earth yeah ear cool so you see this could be fun oh an ear of corn so this could be fun um if you have a bunch of people all sending in um messages at the same time you can see how uh it would be especially useful to um outsource that process of requesting the images downloading them to disk and everything Exporting that to a separate process is very useful in that case, so you don't end up blocking the installation and things can generally flow smoothly without too many drop frames. Um, so yeah, that is the whole project. I'll be uploading the server code. Um, you should see that. So you'll be able to um, take this, adapt it, mold it to your liking, or just use it as a reference if you want. Um, same with the project file itself. And um, yeah, that that's it. Um, hey, um, thanks for checking it out. Um, thanks for watching the stream, and thanks to um, Interactive Immersive IO and Elbers and Matthew Reagan and the guest judges and everyone for doing this competition. It was a lot of fun. Um, looking forward to the next round. So uh, yeah, I'll see y'all online and hopefully someday offline um, in another world. Um, thanks again.